Okay, here is podcast four of the Endocrine System, chapter 11. And in this podcast, we are going to take a look at the pituitary gland and how it is the master gland that controls all the other glands that are listed here. Um, pituitary gland basically is going to control all the different things that are going to happen throughout your body. And it is controlled by a piece of the brain called the hypothalamus, which we have talked about. So if you take a look here, your pituitary gland is actually um, divided into two parts, the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. So anterior is the front part, it's the larger portion, and then the posterior is towards the back. Um, each of them uh, release different kinds of hormones that are going to have different effects. The posterior ones are actually going to go out and they're going to interact directly with organs and make things happen, like oxytocin is going to make the uterus contract, antidiuretic hormone is going to make the kidneys regulate water. Um, and the anterior pituitary gland is actually going to go out and contact other glands, and then those glands are going to then make cells do certain things. Um, for example, growth hormone gets released, which stimulates the body cells to undergo mitosis, which causes you to grow. Uh, thyroid stimulating is going to uh, uh, impact the thyroid gland, tell it to release hormones, and that's going to have their effect. So the effects that they have are a little bit different. So we're going to take a look at each of these. The anterior pituitary hormones, we're going to start with those. First one listed is called prolactin. And if you look at the word lactin, it looks like lactase, which is milk. So prolactin stimulates milk production in women after childbirth, and it can also affect the um, hormones of uh, the sex hormone levels with the ovaries and testes in a men. So this hormone will increase after birth and that will cause a woman to produce milk to get ready to take care of their baby. Uh, women that choose not to breastfeed after they have a child can actually take medicine which will inhibit prolactin from being released and then their milk does not come in. Growth hormone is probably the one that you're most familiar with. Um, a lot of times you'll hear about athletes taking growth hormone to kind of help them their body mass get bigger, their muscles get bigger. Um, its job is to stimulate growth, and you release a lot of it when you're a child, and it's important for maintaining healthy body com composition so you, that your muscles are in proportion with your bones and all of your different parts of your body are supposed to be in proportion. Um, in adults, it does help maintain muscle mass and bone mass, and that's why athletes will sometimes take growth hormone to try to increase their muscle ma mass. Um, and the amount of growth hormone can also um, impact fat distribution in the body. So if somebody is producing too much, it may actually cause them to have greater amounts of fat in certain places. But basically, the amount of growth hormone that you release when you're young is going to correlate to the size that you are later on. And as we know, growth is or uh, height is a genetic trait. So that is linked to your genes, how much growth hormone you can make. Problems with the pituitary gland can result in dwarfism. These people here that are all shown all have a type of dwarfism called pituitary dwarfism, where the pituitary gland is not releasing nearly enough growth hormone. Um, you know, so these two men here are next to their normal sized father, and they're grown men. Um, you know, this little girl is the size of an infant, and I believe in this picture, if I'm correct, she was about five years old, but her body never released enough. Uh, growth hormone, so she was never going to grow into normal size. Um, sometimes the pituitary gland can produce way too much, and you get something called giantism. So this man here was, I, what was it, eight foot one? I think was his top height, top height, the tallest man ever to be documented, at least. Um, and his pituitary gland was overproducing growth hormone and you can see some abnormalities like if you look at his hands um, even the bones in his hands are overgrowing and it actually causes problems where his hands do not work quite right okay another um, hormone of the anterior pituitary is adrenal cortical tropin ACTH um, and this is going to stimulate the production of cortisol and we're going to talk about cortisol. We've done a little bit of cortisol before, but cortisol is a stress hormone. Okay? And we talked about the fight or flight response already, how your body has to be prepared to 
handle types of stress, you know, whether it's survival or whether you're just feeling nervous and the cortisol can help you deal with those stresses. Thyroid stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is going to help regulate your metabolism and growth and nervous system activity. And so we will take a closer look at thyroids, the thyroid gland and the hormones that it produces in the next podcast. Um, luteinizing hormone um, is going to regulate the amounts of testosterone in men and estrogen in women. So it's a gonadotropin. So it actually goes and it will stimulate the gonads directly. The gonads are your ovaries and or testicles. Follicle stimulating hormone, um, FSH, is going to actually promote the body to make sperm or over or eggs. Um, this is what causes a woman to ovulate every month. Sperm production happens fairly consistent, consistently all the time. Um, and they work together to allow for normal function of ovaries and testes. Um, people that um, are having trouble conceiving, like this is the Octomom, you can actually take follicle stimulating hormone um, and it will cause your ovaries to release more eggs than they normally would. Usually they only release one at a time, sometimes two. Um, they can cause you to release many more than that. So she has had multiples a couple of times because she has taken these uh, follicle stimulating hormones, which causes her body to release more eggs than is normal. And then she has multiple pregnancies at once. Okay, your posterior, posterior pituitary hormones. Oxytocin um, is another one that is going to help with nursing mothers to have their milk come in. Um, and it also, this is important, it's going to start contractions during childbirth. So some people, they will start to go through childbirth and then contractions will stop or the baby's way overdue and they have come up with a, a synthetic ver version of oxytocin called Pitocin and that will actually cause the uterus to start doing contractions and the contractions will allow a child to be born. Um, also from the posterior pituitary, you have antidiuretic hormone, okay? And it's ca also called a um, vasopressin and basically its job is to regulate water balance. Um, it keeps your body's water levels exactly where they're supposed to be. And so if this hormone is not working properly, not being released properly, you can end up with high salt or in low water. Um, and that actually can be really bad for your body. If you, it would make you dehydrated and your cells wouldn't be able to function properly without enough water. Um, and these can be really serious effects that can happen to people just because of one hormone not working quite right. Luckily, throughout the endocrine system, there are other hormones that often work in conjunction with these ones um, to help you know, if something's going off or wrong, it can help to balance it back. So we'll take a look at many of the other glands that are in your body in the next podcast.